A recent study by the A4M on uh, Dr. Nick Delgado's lectures over the past five years has proven that listening to a 15-minute speech by Dr. Nick is the equivalent of drinking 16 cups of coffee. All right, so uh, I, I've always wondered after I follow him in a lecture if people were going to start falling asleep, but I'll do the best I can. The uh, program today is about exercise prescription for uh, the prevention of disease, disability, and dysfunction. I don't have time in the 15 minutes allotted to go into a great amount of detail, but I do want to take some time to show you the uh, critical components of exercise. The sports medicine fellowship that I run is dramatically expanding the role of sports medicine. I know for a lot of the sports medicine doctors in the room or those interested in sports medicine, you think of it mostly on the joint replacement, the surgeries, the rehabilitation that goes into injuries. We're expanding that role. What we're looking at is over 65 different diseases, disabilities, and dysfunctions associated with physical activity. From my perspective, you get cardiovascular disease or metabolic syndrome or the other variety of disease we have out there because the underlying physiological systems have degenerated due to lack of use. Does that make sense? Because people are physically inactive, your physiological systems that need the exercise activities in order to stay healthy don't get it. So the disease is a result of sitting around doing nothing. So we've identified 10 different components of fitness, strength, speed, power, anaerobic endurance, aerobic endurance, agility, balance, coordination, flexibility, and body composition. When you identify as a physician what the physiological disorder happens to be, your role should be to find the correct component of fitness that's going to regenerate that system. So the idea with our protocols is to use exercise and sports medicine prescriptions to regenerate the underlying physiological system to get your patient back to health. Non-invasive techniques. Makes sense, right? This is the only machine ever invented that gets better with use. So as you can see on the, the handout here, we've identified, again, over 65 disease that we can regenerate with a proper exercise and sports medicine prescription. These are just a few of the health benefits of physical activity. I don't have time to go into all 135 benefits of physical activity, including improving your sex life. That, that always gets people's attention. Oh, you like that one, right? We'll talk later. All right. But there are many, many things that exercise can do for you that no drug, no pill, no magic elixir, nothing else can do. If you want a healthy cardiovascular system and avoid cardiovascular disease, you're going to have to do aerobic activity. That makes sense. That's pure logic, right? That's about as logical as dropping a hammer on a planet that has gravity. It's going to fall to the ground. If you exercise, how many marathon athletes do you know that get heart disease? How many competitive athletes do you know that get the diseases, disabilities, and dysfunctions that are killing the American population right now? This is a powerful slide. I want you to take a good look at this. As you can see on here, when we get to the point where you can get your patients to do 3,000 calories a week of in moderately intense to intense activities, you will see virtually 100% improvement in all medical and health markers. I just put a few up here on this slide but virtually every single medical marker will improve dramatically. Now, I know what you're thinking. You've got someone out there, a current patient, whose idea of exercise is walking from his couch to the refrigerator to get another beer. So getting them to 3,000 calories a week is going to be a challenge. That is true, but we can do it using certain protocols that we've developed, including motivational protocols, because one of the problems we have is people just aren't motivated to exercise. It's much easier when your patient walks into your office to say, doctor, give me a pill for what hurts. And of course, you've recommended exercise in the past. Do they do it? No. Well, one of the problems is, is when you tell your patients to go out and exercise, the problem is that's kind of like send, selling them an airplane without giving them any flying lessons. Telling them to exercise doesn't tell them how to exercise and how to improve their health through exercise. So part of our protocols are to take care of that very thing. Now, when you read the studies about all the bad things exercise does for you, again, you've got to look at the bell curve, right? It doesn't matter what we're talking about. Any nutrient in nutrition, if you're deficient in a nutrient, your performance drops off, and all, there's the risk of disease, disability, dysfunctions, and possibly death. 
we get the patient up to optimum performance in that particular nutrient, and they're good to go. They're doing everything fine. What happens if they take too much of that nutrient? Disease, disability, dysfunction, possible death. And it doesn't really what nutrient we're looking at. You all heard the story just recently about the uh, 21 horses that died in Florida. Did you hear what the cause was? Selenium overdose. So if your patient doesn't have enough selenium, are they going to optimally perform? No. If they get an overdose of selenium, what happens? If it can kill a horse, look, let's look at a primary nutrient, water. You know that your patients need to drink water, right? If, they don't, if you don't have water, within about three weeks, you'll be dead. What happens if you drink too much water? You've heard the stories about people drinking two and three gallons of water in an hour period of time, and they're dead. Exercise is the same thing. You have to find the right dose. If you find the right dose, the optimum amount, they will optimally perform. If you do too much exercise, and this slide tells you right here, that when you get to the point where you have five hours of intense activity in a week period, the uh, chances of orthopedic injuries rises significantly. That's one of the reasons why you see advanced athletes having the problems that they do. So one of our goals in the exercise protocols is to find the optimum level of exercise so your patients do not experience pain, soreness, stiffness, dysfunctions. For you ex-jocks out there that haven't been working out for a while, some of you may have the intention, uh, after you've gotten all excited from listening to all these lectures and all the things you've said here, that I'm going to hit the gym. I'm going to hit it. I know I'm going to be sore for two weeks, but that's okay. That's not optimum. Your body's very efficient. If you're feeling pain, you're doing something wrong. You're going too intense. The next day following an exercise activity, you should feel like you've used those muscles, but it shouldn't be what you would describe as pain. Also, when we're talking about physical activity, it's not necessarily traditional exercise that you see in the gyms. Some of these activities you see up here, you can get your patients to do. Your patient right now is the person that may live three blocks from the grocery store. Are they going to walk to the grocery store? No. Not only will they get in the car and drive the three blocks to the grocery store, but your patients are probably the people that will drive around the parking lot for 15 minutes so they can get that spot right next to the door. Right? So what we have to educate them to do is instead of taking the elevator, take the stairs. Instead of riding everywhere they go, start walking. Instead of taking that parking spot right next to the door, park in the far end of the lot. Start doing things that are going to use your body and use your muscles.